Believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable. Welcome to our channel. Our mission is to provide a motivational speech and inspirational quotes and relaxing experience to our viewers with content that focuses on the natural beauty. Also, I won't let allow you to waste your valuable time. We bring out the collection of best audio and video. We make most powerful videos on daily basis. Your kind support will be a great motivation and inspiration to my creation. Please subscribe, like and comment if you like the channel. Lord Sri Krishna describes in detail about the importance of controlling the mind. He tells Arjuna that by controlling the mind he can attain complete perfection in life. He makes it clear that without mind control, no one can attain peace and bliss in life. Let us see the verses related to mind control spoken by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita quotes mind control. A transcendentalist should always engage his body, mind and self in relationship with the Supreme. He should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind. Why Arjuna says it is extremely difficult to control the mind. Arjuna was hearing Krishna patiently. Krishna understood Arjuna had some doubts. It is true that one who has controlled his mind can attain anything in his life. But our mind is most of the time unsteady, uncooperative, and restless. But if you tell me to control the mind then it won't be possible. Many yogas and mystics have tried in the past to gain control over their mind. But they failed. But he too failed to control his mind. Even great personalities face so difficulty in controlling the mind. You and I too face so many challenges in life because of our restless mind. Whether it be your personal life or professional life, you face difficulties because your mind does not allow you to act wisely. You easily get distracted because of your uncontrolled mind. Your restless mind does not allow you to focus on your work. But as soon as he opens his books within few minutes his mind takes him to some other world. Working professionals too face similar problem. You may be sitting at your work desk trying to complete your task but you are not able to focus. It is not that you do not know how to do your work, but your mind does not allow you to concentrate. You are not able to sit for long hours and work. What advice Krishna gives in Bhagavad Gita to control the mind? Arjuna, 5,000 years ago was facing similar problem. Krishna completely agreed with Arjuna. He too said that controlling mind is indeed difficult. Krishna gave Arjuna hope. Arjuna is not asking questions for himself only, and Krishna is not answering only to Arjuna. He is assuring us that there is a way by which we can control our restless mind. Controlling the mind by practice. For example, when a child for the first time tries to ride a bicycle, he falls. He may start thinking that it is impossible for him to ride a bicycle. During the process of learning he fails many times. It is true that controlling mind is more difficult than learning a bicycle. You also initially thought riding a bicycle is impossible. Similarly, with practice you should try your best to gain control over your mind. Now when you grow old, you lack enthusiasm, hope and a desire to take up challenges. You should have hope in the words of Krishna. What practice to do to control the mind? You should practice focusing your mind on the activities you are doing currently. You should not allow the mind to get distracted. And by repeated practice, you will ultimately attain victory over your mind. The great Vedic sages practiced meditation to control the mind. When their mind got distracted, they would force their mind to focus on their object of meditation. Mantra meditation is the best way to gain control over your mind. In the present age mantra meditation is the recommended process to gain control over our restless minds. You should chant the holy names of Krishna. While chanting you should focus on the words of the Mahamantra and simultaneously try to hear the transcendental sound. We all who chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra have the experience that during chanting, our mind wanders many times. But immediately we should bring back the mind from wherever it has gone and focus on chanting. Initially, when one starts chanting, mind wanders frequently. I was not even able to chant for five minutes. So, when we start chanting, our uncontrolled mind does not allow us to chat. After repeated practice for few weeks, you will find that mind is not giving the same trouble as it was giving earlier. It takes several years of repeated practice to attain complete control over the mind. Mind has become more controlled. And if with patience you continue the process of practicing mantra mediation then eventually you will win over the mind. When you chant Hare Krishna it means you are praying to Sramadhi Radharani and Krishna, the Supreme Lord. So, when you chant these holy names your mind gets purified of all bad thoughts and harmful impressions. As mind starts getting pure it becomes less restless. It becomes easy to control the mind. How detachment helps to gain control over the mind. Varija or detachment means freeing your mind from those material activities which is harmful for the mind. Chanting the holy names of Krishna, reading literatures like Bhagavad Gita, being an association of sincere devotees of Krishna will help a lot in purifying the mind of all impurities, by detaching the mind from activities not devoted to the Lord. Also, you should not do any activity which is not authorized in the Vedic scriptures like Bhagavad Gita. When you spend significant time in practicing Krishna consciousness then gradually your mind will get free from all the impurities which is the root cause of your uncontrolled mind. A purified mind is easy to control. 
controlling mind is a Herculean task. But by following the formula given by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, you can gain control over your mind. Krishna is teaching that by practice and detachment it is possible to control the mind. And a controlled mind will become your best friend. Once your mind becomes your best friend, it will assist you in whatever activities you will do. If you are a student, then you will be able to study hard with single-minded attention. If you are a working professional then you will be able to do your work with sincerity, with complete attention. You will be able to complete your work in time and even before time. No fear of being reprimanded by the boss. No fear of being laid off because of poor performance. One of the most important point you need to remember is that all activities should be done by keeping Lord Krishna in the center. If you do your duty sincerely by keeping Krishna in the center, then it will become a spiritual activity. When Krishna gets pleased by your endeavor your life becomes successful. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives an invaluable tip as how to gain control over the mind. Also, Lord Krishna said, everything will come and go in our lives and so we cannot get attached to them. Good and bad things will come and go in our lives. We have no control over them. Things may not work out as we expect, so we cannot get attached to them. Good and bad things will come and go in our lives. Life is not exactly a bed of roses. With the right approach, all of us can deal with all adverse things in life. Lord Krishna tells a worried Arjuna, Arjuna, no doubt the mind is very difficult to control. Lord Krishna gave utmost importance to mind and thoughts throughout the Bhagavad Gita. According to Lord Krishna, the first step is to gain clarity on any situation by developing a clear, calm and collected mind. We can always revisit anything that happened to us at work or at home and visualize what would have happened if we did certain things in a totally different way than what happened. Lord Krishna said, Arjuna, you only have the right to act. At the same time, you do not have the right for the fruits of actions. From the outset, the most oft-repeated advice of Lord Krishna is Nishkama Karma, doing action without expecting any reward. Ego or Aham Bhava is the biggest stumbling block in our life. Whenever we engage in selfless thoughts and actions that contribute to the welfare of others, we will enter higher states of mind and we will be surprised to see even total strangers helping us in our projects. Life will become saddening, depressing, etc. When we free ourselves from the outcome and focus instead on the selfless actions, we will be very happy. Lord Krishna said, People do bad karmas due ignorance of the truth, just like a child putting his hand in fire. Child learned from his mistake. So, sin means ignorance of the truth that we are indeed the Atman the immortal soul within the body and living with the false belief we are the perishable material body. That is the reason why Hindu salvation is known as self-realization meaning realizing one is indeed the immortal soul within the body, Atman and rejecting the false belief that one is a perishable material body. Lord Krishna said, that is the reason why Lord Krishna asked us to treat everyone with respect and love. Both Lord Buddha as well as Jesus Christ said we have no right to hate but love. Surrendering to God does not mean to run away from life. It only meant to perform all thoughts and actions surrendering to God, making God the doer and you and I just servants of God. Lord Krishna said, we should not take on more than we can cope with and add enough me time in our day-to-day -day lives to help us calm down. Please do not live the life of your son and daughter. Just like you and I, they will also learn from the trial and error process. They also came with a lot of karmic debt and they have to deal with them in their own personal ways. Lord Krishna said, Arjuna, when inertia and inactivity are predominant, ignorance, stress, and delusion arise. I am retired, so I have nothing to do may sound good, but that will be biggest downfall in your life. That life of inertia will make you physically as well as mentally sick. Lord Krishna said, Belief is the cornerstone of life. Without firm conviction, no one can succeed in life. People come out victoriously even during extreme situations since they believe in what they do. Without conviction, life is not possible. We have nothing to fear except fear itself. Surrendering to God does not mean to run away from life. It only meant to perform all thoughts and actions surrendering to God, making God the doer and you and I just servants of God. Hope you like this video. Thank you. Stay connected. Please subscribe, like and comment if you like the channel. Thank you for the support. We will meet up soon in the next video.